While Zen 6 is still quite some time in the future in terms of hardware releases, after all, Zen 5 based processors haven't even seen the light of day themselves, there are a number of key architectural details which are starting to appear online regarding what we can expect from AMD's future CPU roadmap. Zen 5 is going to bring big IPC gains and some other major changes in the architecture, yes, but in some ways Zen 6 perhaps is going to be even more exciting. While Zen 5 will bring big IPC improvements, Zen 6 is going to change in many of the fundamental ways that AMD have been designing their processors. For example, the CPUs on the uh, mobile and desktop are going to share a lot of similarities. I want to discuss with you some leaks that have appeared on Twitter concerning Zen 6 and some also some interesting stuff that I've been hearing regarding Steam Deck. And we're going to get into that plus more after this message from the video's sponsor. This Halloween is a perfect chance to save even more money off of your Windows 10 or 11 keys at whokeys.com, today's video sponsor. Not only are WhoKeys offering huge discounts off of a range of CD keys, including of course Windows, but you can get an extra 25% off using the code RGT. You can find Windows 10, 11, as well as various Microsoft Office packages, or if you're a budding developer, even Visual Studios. And of course, it goes without saying, there's a large library of games, all at reduced prices. You can use our code RGT to get a huge discount on this entire range of software. I have personally tested the purchase experience using their own personal account, and I've also had various friends try it out as well, and the whole process has been very simple. Just navigate to the product you want to buy, click buy now, and you'll be led straight to the basket where you can add a discount code, again, RGT, for a further 25% off of the hugely reduced Halloween sale price, and then of course it will be sent straight to you. Thanks again to whokies.com for sponsoring today's video. In my prior video discussing Zen 5 as well as Zen 6, I'd stated that the core counts for the CCDs of Zen 6 seem to be a lot more implementation dependent than what we saw with Zen 5. There was a slide which had leaked pointing Zen 6 would go up to 32 cores for its CCD, but from what I was hearing, this was purely for the dense implementation. Now, of course, we've seen dense for uh, server processes from AMD before, and you guys have probably heard a lot about AMD's Zen 5 cheering. CPUs again for server. Recently, Olrak on Twitter provided a hint of 8, 16, and 32. Now, this is a bit of an ambiguous hint, of course, but I think it's pretty safe to say that this is almost certainly Zen 6 CCDs. And I've spoken again to a couple of sources, and they basically doubled down what I'd said in a previous video. In that video, I'd stated in brief that 32 cores was for Zen 6C, again, the dense server chips. 16 cores seemed to be the standard server CCD, a mobile and desktop would have a lower number of cores for its CCD. And from what I'm hearing now, the reasons for this basically revolve around I.O. Now, I have said in a prior couple of videos now that I've been hearing um, AMD may choose to not have Zen 6 based Ryzen's, which I'm going to call Ryzen 9000 for this video, but they could be called anything. It may not be on AM5, but it is apparently not 100% determined yet. It's still something they're deciding internally. But anyway, mobile and desktop, well, kind of desktop, you'll, hit, you'll get why I said that in a moment, but basically they will retain eight core configurations, but the higher core count CCDs, again, seem for server. So this, that is Olrak's tweet, does seem to nudge this as being the correct answer. Now, I have mentioned a few times, AMD are basically doing a lot of changes when it comes to the mobile and desktop implementation. Essentially, the SOC itself is pretty much the same thing now. You can, if you want like a, a simplified explanation in your head, although of course the exact implementation will differ quite considerably, but the basic way of thinking of this approach is more like Intel have done with like Sandy Bridge or Haswell or whatever. In other words, much of the chip itself is pretty much identical. Obviously there are some differences, like for example the socket but you know in terms of the basic design of the chip it's very similar between the desktop and again mobile now what isn't clear yet from what i'm from the sources i'm speaking to is how the dense or little if you prefer fit in with mobile and desktop frankly i've heard a number of different responses to this and i think some of them are outright wrong 
And I've also had one source quite confidently tell me that there are no dense plans for these chips and that they are simply going to be big. But truthfully, I've heard so much mixed information. While I do suspect I've got the right answer, I don't really want to say too much on it yet because, but frankly, I've heard so much mixed information regarding this. And while I do suspect that I do probably have an answer which is largely correct, I don't want to say what it is yet because I want to find out a little bit more about the subtle nuances before I put it out there, because I'm still not 100% certain what the source was referring to. So I'm going to I'm gonna hold off on that for a while, along with a couple of other little bits for Zen 6. But since we are talking about AMD, I did also want to talk about Steam Deck, since, well, they provide the APUs. More specifically, we've seen some hints that indeed Valve are shipping new variants of the hardware. There have basically been some reports of a potential refresh of the Steam Deck hardware, though the specifications of the APU aren't clear. I'll leave a link to the full article in the video description, which you can check out. But the gist is that AM that uh, Valve was about to AMD that Valve were pulling a sneaky. Uh, basically, they were shipping test hardware through one of its partners, the ones who create the Wi-Fi and Bluetooth module, and they did this in an effort to essentially hide the fact that they were sending out new variants of the of the of the hardware now, this is actually quite smart and it makes you wonder how frequently this stuff happens obviously it would be very difficult for someone who's like you know checking these things to go through every single partner of sony or microsoft or whomever to kind of figure out what is being sent and stuff like that but anyway now from what i'm hearing from a couple of sources the new hardware is likely to debut in the second half of 2024, and the actual specifications of the machine seem to be really quite similar to what we're running now. Now, the specs info is coming from a separate source to the release date, but a couple of people have essentially told me that the chip itself seems to be quite similar. And this does make sense. So just to be clear, there's no new graphics IP, there's no new faster CPU or whatever in this new hardware. But again, there are some improvements in, for example, connectivity. As well as I suspect, although I do not know this, improvements in the screen and chassis, etc, etc. But this does tie up quite well with some statements from Valve. A couple of weeks back, actually, an employee was... Um, basically saying that Steam Deck, um, they want the specifications to remain in stone for a number of years. So in essence, upgraded hardware, again, I'll leave a link to this article in the video description. Uh, I checked it out on WCCF Tech. They wouldn't really want to launch new hardware until some point in like 2025, 2026. So if you think about it, a lot of games now, a lot of AAA games or even more indie titles are actually shipping with like a Steam Deck graphics setting. Now, I don't really need to explain what that does, but it basically optimizes the experience for like a Steam Deck like device. So in essence, if they were to regularly update the hardware, which has a lot of different challenges anyway, like marketing and well, you know, verification and testing, etc, etc, etc. But even in a world where that isn't such a big deal, you would still have developers essentially constantly chasing those new specifications. And obviously that hurts adoption rate and so on, which is not what Valve want to do. They want to increase the saturation of the device. And this has also led to some benefits for people like even myself who don't own a Steam Deck, because, you know, in theory anyway, it would improve the optimization, well, I say in theory, um, of, you know, games, etc. And so this is essentially is a more console-like approach, almost like generational. Um, I don't want to exactly say like PS4 to PS5, but I suppose you could kind of say it's similar. This is not really like a smartphone, like Apple, you know, iPhone 10 to whatever. Um, it's kind of similar. Now, I have heard that, of course, there is a more powerful Steam Deck on the horizon, but... It's probably more just speculation anyway, and obviously Valve themselves have essentially said that it is eventually coming. Um, I'll be very interested to see what they do with the new version of this hardware, and by which I don't mean this small update, but the, the vastly improved specifications. I suspect, although I don't know this, that they'll continue with uh, AMD. It's going to be very interesting, though, to see what happens with this going forward. Because, obviously, um, you guys may have seen the news 
that uh, honestly there's a lot of interesting stuff that's happening in the PC market as a whole at the moment and I think the Steam Deck of course is important in its own ecosystem but while Steam Deck is great in terms of oh well in the very basic form you get to play games on the go and has actually spawned of course its own line of competitors for example from Asus and so on and so on it will be very interesting to see what driving force that has on the market you may have seen some rumors that windows 12 is going to offer basically a subscription-based service now i can't really verify that myself I, my sources haven't heard anything about that so whether that's true or whether it's a caveat of it's only for certain server-based uh, functionality or whether it's yes it's true but only for certain OS functionality for you know professional users or whether that's just the entire OS I honestly do not know but um, it's hard to deny that Valve obviously have a pretty big hole in the PC gaming market and if you are just a PC gamer it's going to be very interesting let's say in two three five years time to see how many people will just use a Linux based OS and obviously it will have its own stuff that allows of course it to basically run DirectX games you guys know about Proton and all that stuff so I'm not going to belabor that point too much here in the video so it's going to be very interesting to see how all of this stuff shapes up and obviously Steam Deck uh, in and of itself is a very intriguing uh, piece of hardware um, but with that said guys let me know your thoughts and opinions on this and also about the Windows OS subscription I'm not 100% convinced Windows 12 will go with a subscription model to be honest but as I said I don't know one way or the other um, but yeah let me know your thoughts on this take care of yourselves have an amazing day bye for now